Hi, this is Brian from Chibu Star Adventures. Uh, before you watch this video, I wanted to say a few things. Um, this video was very hard for Chica and I to make. Uh, we put a lot of thought into it, and um, the fact that I'm married to a Japanese woman made it even a little bit harder for me to uh, go to Manzanar. Um, I understand the fear and the anger that there was towards the Japanese people at the time of the war, but um, the fact that a majority of these people were American citizens and the fact that they lost their homes and their businesses just really made it seem so unfair. unfair. So when we left Manzanar, we both just really felt sad and just kind of an overwhelming feeling of numbness. And um, so with that said, please watch this video with an open mind. Let's not forget our past and let's please hope that something like this doesn't happen again in the future. Okay, so enjoy the video. Thanks for watching us. After the attack on Pearl Harbor and the start of World War II, President Roosevelt decided that all Japanese Americans living on the West Coast were a threat to U.S. security. Starting in 1942 and through 1945, 120,000 Japanese were sent to 10 internment camps throughout the U.S. This is our look at Manzanar. As Commander-in-Chief, I have directed that all measures be taken for our defense. The order stated that the West Coast was to be considered a military area. Persons of Japanese ancestry were to be removed and housed away from the West Coast. There were 10 war relocation centers to which persons of Japanese ancestry were sent. We were told that we are being evacuated so that the government can protect us. Was to grab a bag and, and put straws in the bag. And that was our bed for that night. But the first night, all of a sudden I realized that oh my God, there are holes in the roof. The weather was always harsh, either bone-chilling cold or extreme heat. Constant winds and sandstorms added to make life hard. Just to give you an idea of how big this camp was, every one of these little blocks on this scale model was a separate barracks. Today, all the barracks are gone. All that remains of them are foundations. Back at the time when they were here, the barracks lined both sides of these roads.
couple of the barracks have been rebuilt and show us what the living conditions were like at the time. Each of the barracks held up to 30 people, mixing families and strangers together. This is the mess hall where all the meals were prepared and everyone ate together. One of the meals that they were known for was hot rice with cold jello on top. This is the kitchen area where all the meals were prepared. There was no privacy, even in the bathrooms. Can you imagine sitting next to a total stranger on the toilet? The Japanese people appreciate nature. So eventually the people got together and put in lawns and gardens. Over the years, the gardens had been buried under many feet of sand. Family members and relatives of internees volunteered to dig them out and restore them as best they could. This is how they look today. Baseball was a big part of daily life, as was growing all their own vegetables. They had town meetings, but in the end, there were always the barbed wire fences and a loss of freedom. Provides for a restitution payment to each of the 60,000 survivors. Yet we must recognize that the internment of Japanese Americans was just that, a mistake. Here we admit a wrong. Nihon de mare sodachi, senso shiranai watashi ni, kono nikkei jin tachi no amari ni mo 複雑な状況や思いを理解するのは到底不可能なことです。当たり前に流れているこの時間はいろいろな歴史の積み重ねの結果であって、自分のいなかった時代を知らずに生きるのは私はやっぱり恥だと思いました。こうして歴史を向き合うアメリカの姿勢は素直にすごいことだと思います。私は手を合わせながらこの果てしない荒野で生活していた方たちの孤独感や悲しみを。
改めて思うのは戦争は悲しみしか生み出さないなとどうか平和な世界が続きますように。